Just testing sound, testing sound. Okay, it is 1 p.m. I don't know, okay, people are joining now. So for those of you joining, if you can hear me well, please. Uh, okay, sounds work. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Uh, let's wait use a few more minutes and and I'll start and uh, the, the good thing about using Google is that it's like on demand so even if you arrive late to the stream you can watch it from the beginning okay so we have enough people right now welcome to the first uh, live meeting of of 2020 and I guess for this year the the new thing is that um, that we are going to do one every week. So let's see if Fridays work fine, and if not, we can move it to a different day. So it's just depending on the feedback, you guys let me know. I, I'm pretty much um, flexible. I know that uh, you guys have um, live videos from other services too, so the idea is not to conflict, you know, create conflicts with other ones. No, no. So, so Friday, I think 1 p.m. works fine. So let's just start right away. Um, I'm going to start quickly just reviewing some performance of uh, of the room, no? So just looking back at 2019, the performance of the Gamma Optimizer room was, I think, was really good. If you look in on paper, uh, the final number, the final number is still really impressive, around 100 percent, higher than a little higher than 100 percent on the forever ideal 2000 account, no? So um, I am not disappointed. However, uh, looking at, at the performance by halves of the year, uh, you can see right away that the second half was terrible. So the first half performance was fantastic. I mean, we almost got all of the performance on the first six months of the year. And then in the second half, uh, we just stopped. You know, it was a combination of uh, the market itself and also the NDLA losing any ability to predict moves up. So, so we didn't do much t many trades and and in fact, the few that we did were losers. So uh, it is a miracle that we actually finish uh, <laughs> with a positive 5.5 on the second semester of the year, the second half of the year. So yeah, it was it was bad. But but then considering SPX, I think it was fine. The, the total performance of the SPX was 28 percent, and we managed to beat it handedly. You know, we beat it. We beat, we beat that. 28% with 100%, so it's not bad. In the second half, the market actually beat us. The market went up almost 10%, and we were just moved half of it. So it's something to consider for this year. I, I, I have noticed it uh, in my own trading. It's, it's, it's really seasonal. It's, it, it does have a cyclical thing to it. I tend to do really well at the beginning of the year, and then towards the second part of the year, I slow down a lot. And, but that's a reflection of trading at a personal level because I I don't know if you're aware folks I, I trade for a living no that's the only thing I do well a few other things I do on the sides but mostly it's trading and I think it happens to all of the traders that trade for a living we we trade really with intensity at the beginning of the year and once we have what we think is a nice cushion for the whole year we kind of slow down taking less risk so uh, yeah, I apologize that that kind of mentality uh, reflects on the gamma optimizer room. I mean, I am a trader and then my own trade, it, you know, filters into the room and that's why I slow down. So I'll try not to slow down too much um, this in 2020. So that's kind of the lessons, <laughs> the lessons uh, that we learned from 2019. And I think the, the first lesson that uh, I want to, to impress on everyone is, please, I mean, if, if we have systems that we designed it to be traded in a certain way. Let's trade the systems that way. I know you guys are really entrepreneurial and very curious and like to look at um, statistics on your own. But not, you know, last year was a perfect example of why that is so risky. You know, for those of you that were trading negative signals from the NDLA, uh, it, it, those signals really underperformed terrible towards the end of the year. Now, the problem with the, those, that kind of trading is that the risk reward is less than one. So you're risking more than what you are making. And in the, so a few failed 
trades are enough to erase several uh, winning ones. So, so okay, that's kind of a lesson that, that I want to impress on you folks. And let's keep it uh, real for 2020. Let's let's focus on on signals with high risk reward. You know, ideally higher than 1.0. Let's try to use the tools for what they were designed, in particular for the trades that will give us the best edge. And in general, the lesson is always that long gamma beats short gamma all of the time. Long gamma means having a net long gamma exposure on the trade. No? So we, we, we are actually, that means time decay works against us. So, uh, so even with time decay, the long gamma trades beat handedly short gamma. So collecting premium, uh, even though it looks like a good idea, it's not that a good idea. And finally, I know, you know, you can do anything you want. <laughs> so you are free to do all the trades you want. But try to stick with the official trades. I mean, if you are unsure of what to trade and if you see other people trading, you know, be really mindful um, of, uh, you know, everyone has a different risk appetite and you might, some members might have a higher appetite for risk than yourself. So if you are new or if you are less experienced trader, uh, so it's safer to stick with the trades. You know, for those of you that stick with the official trades, you made hundred percent less year return. You no, know? uh, that's that's kind of the the parameter that, that we should use. So let's let's stick with the official trades. They might it might not be exciting. It might be a slow, but uh, you know it makes money you know, because you are trading with me. You no, know? that's that's I I do the official trades and just a few other trades that I do privately. And I don't publish them because they are more complex and they have different risk profile. But in, in, even my personal full trading was not that much different than the official NDLA. I, I mean, I probably made a, a few more points, like seven points more than, than the official one. So it's not a big difference. So I, I guess the official trades are really good. Okay, oh, by the way, for those of you new to the live videos, you can ask questions at any time. You can interrupt me. I'm keeping an eye on the chat window in YouTube. So you can use it and interrupt me at any time. Um, uh, so, so let's talk about the new neural nets. Uh, if, if you were following this, we we used to have the NDLA nets, and I I kind of retired them and replaced them with convolutional nets. No, so it's a different technology. Not only the nets have more data, more training data, but they have a different technology. But you know, we had been evaluating them for almost a month little longer than a month. And, and the results are, are, are in, I guess. It's easy to see that Ultra 4 is the one that is most stable, the more stable one. Um, and not only is the best one, it's, it's, it's also, if you, if you pay attention, is the descendant of the NDLA. No, that's basically Ultra 4 is the NDLA. No, <laughs> it's only that it's done with a different te technique, but it's the same trade. No, it's a 1% up trade. And that trade has lots of edge in itself. So with a convolutional net, we are just keep adding edge to it. So if you if you have to pick a, a, a trade from all the three possible ones that keep being generated in the variant center, Ultra 4 is, is a safe bet. Zero 01 is very unstable, uh, terrible. I mean, I think Zero 01 is the one that I like the least. Um, it is, it is basically performing uh, worse than the null hypothesis, no? <laughs> so the null hypothesis of zero one is that the market always goes up. That's, that's the null hypothesis. So you, I think you could be making more money assuming that the market always goes up every week, no? And, and that's how I see it. It's a, um, the problem with zero one is that the trades have very low risk reward. So, so, so the, those trades are not that good. You're risking a lot of money for for uh, a small reward. Negative one. I'm still I'm still keeping it there. I I mean, it is okay. This is trailing the null hypothesis a little bit, but I I, I kind of like it at least for informational purposes. It, it seems to 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 serve well. Uh, of course, you notice that all of the nets we introduce the nets. That's so funny. I introduce the nets. Uh, and then a few days days later, then we got these uh, trade related tweets. Uh, that's kind of funny. I mean, only a few sessions after we started, the market just went up massively, reacting to exogenous events. And that's okay. That's the nature of the beast. No, like someone tried to use the market, he was successful, and whatever was the pattern that the neural nets were looking for, 
uh, got destroyed and the market just kept going up and up and up and up and so that down cycle that the nets were kind of predicting didn't work at all so um, I don't know I, I mean it is it is the nature of the beast no you cannot predict the future <laughs> and and I wish I could have use that particular data point uh, to train them but I, I, I was doing the training I was done with the training early on December so I missed that but uh, for 2018 I'm going to uh, to retrain the nets a little bit to incorporate that that kind of uh, a period of a massive outperformance and see if it, it has an effect on the cycles this thing is trying to to produce and that's the last point I, it seems that the convolutional nets are more cycle based with the NDLA I could never see what was how the thing was working. I mean, in DLA and even in DLA two, it was they were a mystery to me. They gave me positive signals, and then they gave me negative signals, and there was kind of like I could not see a pattern there. But with the new convolutional nets, I kind of I, I see the pattern. I can see that it's very cyclical, and and they really bunch a lot. I mean, the the negative signals tend to bunch together as well as the positive signals. So it seems there is some cycle thing going on with the convolutional nets. So what is the plan for 2020? The plan, okay, is very simple. I think I'm going to stick with Ultra 4 trades. And in fact, the first trade of the year is, is based on Ultra 4. Um, and for positive signals, because those are the ones with great risk reward. And also, the whole point of 2020, at least at the beginning, is to take advantage of low implied volatility. I, I want to, uh, options are, are cheap right now, even after the the geopolitical events uh, last night, uh, implied, volatility, implied volatility is low and options are cheap. So that's an advantage to us and that opens the doors to very interesting trades and I am going to do that. I also I am also going to introduce a new uh, Ultra 4 net retrain, you know, the, including the tweet at the end of the year, just because, you know, just, just, just to have more data. That's, that's it. And, and this is going to... Uh, go live uh, next week and I'm also going to provide you with two new nets for 10 sessions those nets are really I know that some members really love them I don't know why I, I like them in the sense that they gave me information but you know 10 sessions is a long time ago they are making predictions uh, into the future so you just imagine if the market is some kind of chaotic system like the weather then the farther out the prediction, the less visibility, the less precision you can have. No? So these 10 session nets, I will say that that are more risky than the five ones, that, that the, the ones that we use, there's only five sessions out. But there is a whole, there is an interesting um, paradox there. So the system, because it's looking at the future in two weeks into the future, is, is less precise in, in one sense. However, those nets are easier to to train because the market uh, in the long horizons tend to be more stable. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say here. So, so in, in a week the market can be really crazy, but if in two weeks the market kind of has a small trend, and in, in a month the market just keeps trending, and if you look at years, the market just goes up. No, that's that's how it works. So you don't even need a neural net to <laughs> to trade. Um, time frames that of one year or more. No, you just 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 go bullish on it, you know, the market just goes up. So, so I don't know, so ten, the 10 session uh, nets, I introduce them as informational. They will produce information but not trades. Maybe you can use the information to, to um, I don't know, complete the picture that you're trying to see for your own trading. Uh, they can be useful, that's how, how I use them. And also for, for, just for January and February, I'll, I'll trade only um, on expirations. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday. The the reason is I don't want to over trade. I just want to start like getting the the hand of trading again after you know half of the year last year we didn't trade much. So let's start with only Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, just just for practicality. There is nothing mysterious about those days. It's just that uh, it's it's an easy way to kind of restrict uh, the amount of capital that we're going to use, and just to give the market a chance to see to choose what it's going to do this year. Also, during January, uh, probably the first week of February, I'm going to use hedges. Uh, as you saw on the first trade of the year, the first trade of the year uh, was a little more expensive than usual because we added a, a hedge, a 
0.3% down hedge to it. And and the hedge will cost what forty cents. I don't know. It was it was a cheap hedge. So I just I don't mind spending forty cents if we are going to get the big one <laughs> soon. So uh, so so in general if if volatility if we are going to get a volatility explosion it will be soon you know what i mean it's not going to be in june it's not going to be in september it is going to happen soon if we don't get a volatility explosion very very early i expect the market just to go to i don't know 4000 i guess uh, the market just will continue going up if a correction is going to show itself it will happen in the next few weeks Okay, I feel like I'm going incredibly fast, so please slow me down, folks, if you have questions. So, in terms of volatility, um, volatility right now is incredibly low. Volatility is both in realized and implied volatility, we are seeing extremely low values, or uh, an ambiguity remains very elevated. That, to me, is the, is the killer combination. That's why I think if a volatility explosion is going to be really soon because uh, that combination cannot last a whole year. Um, I, I guess, I mean, it could. The last time it happened was back in 2017. That was the last time it happened. But I think 2017 was a very, very uh, an outlier year. It was an outlier. It will not happen right now unless, I don't know, the Fed decides to do quantitative easing on full scale again. But, but as long as we have the current um, monetary policy and fiscal policy, I, I mean, the same conditions remain, I see the volatility of very soon. Again, if it doesn't happen, I will just switch to full-blown, ultra-bullish mode. Uh, and then looking at the current trades. Okay, I have a, a question from Jim, finally. Thank you, Jim, for asking the question. Uh, NDLA2 was... 9.15 in December, back to longer term, average of 60%. Could you talk about your decision to start using it? Uh, okay, Jim, yeah, so we can take a look at NBLA too. I, I don't mind having a little detour here. Uh, so let's look at NBLA too. And I have it here ready. So we see that, uh, uh, that the performance is coming back a little bit. If you notice uh, the table of predictions, I hope you can see it. Is is here at the bottom. I don't think I have a mouse, but let's see. You can. I am highlighting the the NDLA table right now, so you can see on that NDLA table that um, that it looks that NDLA two was doing really well. It was predicting all those positives that we were not seeing, and it was uh, and in fact it was predicting a positive for Tuesday and it's positive today. And the performance is is coming back. And uh, let me see what is what is the current performance uh, of uh, let me get the stats for NDLA two. Okay, you can tell that I I like to type. <laughs> so the stats are here on this corner. And in fact, full precision is is now up to 64%. So NDLA2 is not bad. It's not a bad net. It's just that I, it suffered too much. I mean, the, uh, I decided to change it because uh, this net was highly unstable with 11 inputs. And that's why I switched it to Ultra4. Ultra4 only has two inputs and is convolutional. So uh, Ultra4 should have much better precision going forward. Of course... Don't take my word for it. No, we will evaluate it and see. But mathematically, Ultrafort should be stronger than NDLA2. But I'm not saying that NDLA2 is bad. It's only that I had a tremendous underperformance at some point. No, and and that's why it kind of motivated the change that and the and and the need to use more contemporary data for training. So when when the time to retrain came, I decided to create a new structure. But I am not retiring and you can use NDLA2 if you want. NDLA2 is always available. The only thing, if you look here at the at the top, you can use the same links I send and just, so just make sure you type variance. Instead of bar2, just put variance and it will show you the all variance center and you can see the all trust the NDLA and the all NDLA2. Uh, so that's that was kind of uh, the reason I just wanted to use convolutional nets for it. It's, it's, it's basically, that was the only decision. Okay, so 
I have another question from Donna. Why volatility event in February? Okay, so what is the rationale in February? My, my whole thesis, and this is, I know that Avi doesn't like any of this thing, although I can see that he's coming to the fundamental side little by little. <laughs> The whole, the whole, my whole hypothesis is that uh, funds in general, hedge funds, uh, well, you know, parity risk, uh, risk parity funds, any type of funds, the, the approach to positioning is very similar. You you try to construct a portfolio with certain weights. Now you try to create, be neutral in something. You could be risk neutral. You can be, you can have some neutrality in terms of other parameters, but you know. At the end of the day, with the passage of time, your portfolio starts getting unbalanced. For instance, anyone that had equities last year uh, in their portfolio at the beginning of the year, then it got tremendously unbalanced because the XPX, the S&P 500, went up 28%. That's a massive, massive move up. So any equity par portion of the portfolio now is overweighting the other ones. No, if you didn't do anything to it, I mean, if you didn't balance the portfolio during the year, you have an overweighted portfolio. And I think my hypothesis is that pretty much everyone is overweight equities right now, okay? Because of the 28% massive increase. And also because you notice that in the second half, the market went up 10%, which is not bad at all. So even those that were not overweight started to chase. And so the, the late chasers are overweight now. So everyone, to me, right now is overweight equities. So what happens is that Volatility is extremely low, and with volatility being extremely low, you know that the risk is that it's going to revert to the mean, so volatility is going to increase. And anything could, type, could tip volatility on increase, and the moment we have an increase, and we have all these overweight uh, portfolio guys, um, uh, then then they are going to rebalance, and when they when the rebalance happens, it's going to be massive. The rebalance is not going to be a few billions here and there. It's going to be tens of billions on rebalancing, and that will move the market down a lot. We can have, to me, at least 4 to 5%, uh, and that's the volatility event. And if the rebalance happens, it has to happen in the first month of the year, you know, because otherwise there is no point in rebalancing. <laughs> so that's kind of my hypothesis, Donna. Uh, you, you, I'm going to skip a couple questions and uh, what will be the catalyst? Anything can be a catalyst. We don't need a catalyst. Anything, anything, any excuse. When we have extra volatility, the only thing you have to do is get people nervous. When people start getting nervous, when the when the funds start seeing that they are accumulating losses or when they start seeing the profits are evaporated, they are going to start liquidating, rebalancing to neutrality. And it is a feedback loop. You know, this fund rebalances and it keeps drives prices lower than the other fund rebalances, drives prices lower, so forth and so on. Right now, we have an internal force that is keeping the market up, which is the long gamma regime that option dealers are enjoying. You know? So the, in, the option dealers are serving as some kind of backstop to the market. Whenever this happens, for instance, today, you could see right away all this buying. Most of this buying is coming from option dealers. I'm telling you right right away. Uh, uh, it's coming from option dealers because they have they are long gamma and they have to go back to neutrality and they are forced to buy. So they are being forced to buy. But you know, option dealers are not the market. They are just a portion of the market, and their buying power or selling power, no, depending on what they are doing, is not infinite. No. So there's going to be a point where where like organic forces are going to overtake hedging, and when it happens, it's going to be the volatility event. Why not starting now? Uh, yes, yes, I, I, that's why I'm positioned. I was positioned for the volatility event right now. <laughs> that was our first trade of the year. I was positioned for a tremendous volatility event in the first two sessions of January. But if it doesn't happen in the first weeks of January, it's not going to happen in January. Uh, so, so January just will move on, and then in February, it will be the next rebalancing point. No? So, so the rebalancing is the window for the rebalancing is right now. If it doesn't happen right now, then we have to wait for the next window, which is next month. Okay, does Ultrafall recommend mostly short gamma trades? Uh, only when the signal is negative, Ray. It's only when the signal is negative. For when Ultrafall has a positive signal, the trade is long gamma. So that's why I, 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 I want to trade positive signals because I want to be long gamma at the beginning of the year. 
Jim says, have you thought of using the values net to construct a composite probability distribution? Of course, Jim, it is a, it's a very tempting and I, uh, it's a very tempting thing to do, to, to create all the nets and, and to try to create the distribution of the price based on the nets. No? Uh, in fact, I think that's what El Toro Oro does all the time. El Toro is doing that and I know that Ludwig is also doing that when they post the beautiful graphs. They are creating a visual composite of the nets that give uh, an idea of the distribution. Uh, I have thought about it, but uh, the mathematics behind that uh, are not there. <laughs> so <laughs> it is, if you, if you look at, at this from a mathematical point of view, uh, it doesn't give you what you think is giving you. The, the errors in every net accumulate really quickly. So, so they don't, you know, this is, those are non-linear type of stuff. Uh, of errors and they don't accumulate, they just use them up the error of one with the error of the other with the error of the other. The, the error just propagates in a non linear way. So when you create all these nets to create a composite, you're not really doing the right thing. The, the right thing to do is to actually create a neural net for the distribution. That will be the, the, the right way to do it. And and before you ask, yes, I have looked into it. I look into it, but the, the, there is an issue with this. The issue is that, that the market, even though it's a random process, the, if you look at the probability density of the distribution, is heavily, heavily focused in a very small area. So, 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 so that means that you have a very frequent type of outcome every week and very, very infrequent uh, moves uh, on the week two, you know, in other weeks. So for the neural nets, those infrequent events are discarded completely. And, and that's a problem. I mean, that's because those are the ones we want to capture. <laughs> so yeah, the, the current state of the art of uh, neural nets is not allowing us to train them with very infrequent events. I, I, I would love to, to, to get a breakthrough in, in machine learning. If someone can come up with a breakthrough in machine learning that allows uh, the training of a particular net with very little um, data points, then that it will solve the issue. So, the, so that's my main issue right now. The issue is that the most interesting returns, the most interesting moves are very infrequent and neural nets cannot deal with this type of infrequent events. Uh, or they, they were not designed. You have to have like a good collection of those events for the neural net to come up with some kind of pattern that produces them, and the and the, the the reality is that in the data set we don't have it. No, so so we have events that are probably five percent of the time, or four percent of the time. That's that's nothing. We will need like a gigantic data set. So the four percent is at least ten thousand samples. No, we need thousands of samples for this, and we don't have them. Okay, okay, good questions, good questions. <laughs> so I'll go, I'll come back to. Now I'm going to finish very soon. So the current trades. Okay, the first trade of 2020 is doing very well. I hope so, it's doing very well. I know I'm talking here and who knows what it's doing right now, but let's see what is doing the current trade. Yeah, the current trade is doing okay. it's doing well. It was doing much better yesterday. Yesterday we have like 50% return. Today we only have 21% return. But we have to be mindful that we got a massive downside last night. Uh, this position is fantastic, you know, even with the tremendous downside, with the end of the world mentality, the market opened and the position wasn't green. I, I cannot believe that, you know, <laughs> after, I don't know, more than 1% down, the position was green. And the position is still green and way above the stopping parameter. So I think it looks, it looks good. I think we are going to collect jackpot on this next Wednesday. Remember, this position is for... You know, it was designed for Tuesday, but the expiration is on Wednesday. So the odds of a jackpot are gigantic. In fact, because we are only 10 points away from it. And I can I can tell you, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to burn burn some karma. The market will probably close at 3,000 to 255 today. So the fifth, the target will be the close today. The market will probably close at the, at the, at the target of the, of the, of the trade. So. And you ask me why I I cannot quantify. I'm just telling you, it's just well, well, it's always it's a nice number, and it was the number yesterday, and I everyone will bring it to them. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, so so the trade is doing well, and 
Let me see what else. And then questions. Oh, okay. Do I have a tray for today? Mm. Okay, another question from Donna. From your perspective, is the first week if of January over today? No, the, it's not over today. It's the, to me, it's the first five trading sessions. And right now, today is only the second trading session of, uh, of January. So we, you know, I, still, I, I will give it until Friday next week. More exactly until Wednesday now. But, uh, but I will say it could happen from today to next Friday. Any other questions, folks? Okay, so I went to, uh, before going, I want to just quick quick comments about a couple of things. So the variance center is, uh, the neural nets are suggesting some trades, but nothing that is being suggested uh, I like. Um, Ultra 4 is suggesting a negative trade. I don't like, and even you notice the edge is negative, so no trade for me based on this. However, I like the past <laughs> the past predictions a lot. I like this one. This one I like a lot. So uh, this was uh, 3,290. I like it, but I, I might do something not quite uh, through this area, maybe a little lower, probably 3,270, probably 20 points lower than it was. But something uh, that is cheap in the spirit of, of uh, upside into next Friday. Uh, that's something that I will be tempted to do today. So I will be tempted to add more upside for next Friday. Of course, hedging it with a little um, toy downside hedge if it's cheap. Uh, and that's it. That's, that's what I wanted to show you. If you have anything else, folks, just let me know. Otherwise, we can end uh, this particular live video today. Oh, Lori, I have a question for Lori. Do you use Kelly Fractional to determine the amount that you invest personally in these new nets? If you have 100k professionally, what will be the percentage invested? Uh, okay, Lori, I do have Kelly. Yes, I do use Kelly. And I do have a very sophisticated algorithm um, to size them. However, you know, for the gamma optimizer room, we can simplify. My rule will be, if you have 100,000K uh, for this, you could do this trace on 50 contracts each. But that will be, uh, the sizing of 50 contracts will be uh, the size for, for the ultra for net. That will be the only net that I will size at 50 contracts. Okay, if you want sizing for any other net, uh, I can provide it. You know, I, I can go over you, but I, you know, just giving you a heads up. If if it is a positive ultra four, you could do fifty. I mean, fifty is a little aggressive, but it it will work. It will really put that money to work. Okay. Okay, so thank you for watching. Uh, let's hope we can do this every week. I mean, I, I could give you an status of trades, and, and this keeps me on my toes too. I, 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 you know, it gives me an incentive to design new trades and have subjects to talk. And so I appreciate you folks for joining um, the live stream, and hopefully, see you next week. Take care.